Good morning, good morning, good morning. My name is Jason Allen. I am a realtor based in Palm Springs, California, affiliated with Keller Williams Luxury Homes, also based in Palm Springs. And each week I like to bring you a report to describe the overall market health, as well as the, uh, the market health in a specific city. I choose one of the four that I typically do the most business in. Today it's Rancho Mirage. So this is the desert housing report that I work with, and it's for June 2024, although we're on July 8th, 2024, June is the month through which we have all our numbers. And as I mentioned, we're going to focus on Rancho Mirage. That's this area right here, a little bit to the east and south of Palm Springs. For So you can get your bearings. This is the Highway 111, which goes through all of our cities. And then over here is the 10, where my cursor is and my image in the upper right-hand corner. That's to the east. And then over here this way on the other side is to the west. So the chart uh, that I'm going to show you, as I say, break it down, looking at the whole valley, which are the nine cities that are shown here, uh, plus Desert Hot Springs up there and Coachella down there, right? And then as we get into other charts, it'll be specific to each city, and I'm focused on Rancho Mirage. So the Desert Housing Report takes a look at what what they've designed as the overall sales recovery chart. And this is averaging the years 2016, 17, 18, and 19. And then using that as the baseline for normal, since we didn't have any big swings in those uh, four years. And then we're saying here, this is COVID. And you can see where we had more sales than we knew what to do with. <laughs> and then over here, we can see Post-COVID, as people went back into the workforce in other places and Zoom meetings were fewer, we've sold less than what we would have. So we're still below our norm and it's sort of like, well, we're slowing down a little bit here. This I would attribute to largely to our uh, interest rates. We don't have any control over that. Federal Reserve does that. Um, and I'll pause here for just a second in case you wanna read this, you can stop your YouTube screen take a look at it. All right, I'm going to move on. Now we're talking about prices. And the charts will break it down into a couple of different ways. One is they use the term median. Median is the price of something right in the middle, half above, half below. And the other is we and the other is average, which is taking all of the items in a set, adding them up and dividing by the number in the set. And you take medians and averages depending on which is most appropriate so that you can get a holistic view and you have some number that is consistent that you can consistently calculate over a period of time. And that gauges the overall health of something. It's kind of like maybe your, uh, your triglycerides, your cholesterol level may spike one way or the other on a given month. It doesn't mean you're particularly unhealthy in that month. We want to see the overall trend. Are you trending to a worse or a better place? All right. And then we're going to look at detached homes versus attached. And uh, the detached homes are your condos, townhouses, that sort of thing. Excuse me. Detached are your single family dwellings. Attached are those properties are like condominiums and patio homes or townhomes, that sort of thing. And what I've circled over here are these two numbers. And this is current. 695 is current. 690 is a year ago. Overall in the Coachella Valley, uh, the house that sold was right in the middle at 695. And you can see that this overall growth trend is at about five and a half percent a year. Now, in, within a year or spanning a year or two, it may go up or down. But if you're holding property for the long haul, that's a really great return. And then we're going to look at attached. So this is your condos. A year ago, we were at the median was at 475. And this year, this month at this year, we are at 475. So you are still seeing that stability in the market uh, that we've kind of been witnessing for a while now. All right, now we're going to dive into Rancho Mirage specifically. And here we do average. So we take all the homes that sold in Rancho Mirage last month, uh, break them up into the detached single family dwellings versus attached. And then we divide by the number in each and come up with some averages. And here what we're looking at is for the average size home in Ranch Mirage at about 3,200 square feet, it sold at about a million four hundred seventeen thousand. 
And a year ago, that same house on average would have sold for a million three twenty two. So that's a seven and a half, seven point two, excuse me, gain a year over year. Much better than that five and a half or four and a half percent, depending on whether it's attached or detached. So you can have these variations from month to month. But again, that previous chart was just looking at the overall trend. And then, of course, if you bought your house 14 years ago, 15 years ago or so, you're doing on a really well at 180% overall return on your investment. And then if we look at the attached homes, average is about 1,800 square feet. It sold last month for 585. A year ago, that sold at 595. So you can see it's down by almost 2%. S slight variation over year over year. And then if you've owned it since 2011, our low point, you're still at 177.5% gain. Now, why do we say that? It's so that sellers who are thinking of selling and have owned their home for a long time, we want you to understand you are getting value out of your home. The asset has improved dramatically. Now, if you've just bought your home during COVID, you're going to have a problem. I mean, you're going to lose money, I guess, is the better way of putting it more succinctly. Um, so now let's look at units. Okay. So this combines all three, the detached, the attached, and total sales. And they use a rolling three-month average to account for blips in the market. And overall volume is down. Now, we're not down hundreds and hundreds of units. We're down a little bit. And that's true for all. And then detached as well and attached. Not huge drops in overall sales. Now let's go home sales averaged by city and Rancher Mirage. June of last year, we sold 73 homes there. And this year we sold 71. Again, not a huge drop. You can look at India just by chance and you can see they had more sales. So, and then in Coachella, significantly less, but their overall volume is 14, 15 homes on average. All right, let's look at the sales by price bracket. So if you remember this chart up here, these are the two price brackets that we're going to focus on Rancho Mirage at a million four and Rancho Mirage uh, just under 600,000. And so if we look at those two and we say, wow, more units in each of those price brackets throughout the valley at least sold. So we get a mixed picture when we compare it to something like this, which suggests the overall sales are down or this valley-wide overall sales are down. If we look at the specific price bracket and people shop based on price bracket, what they can afford, you could actually see that there were more sales in each of those two categories. Does that mean more of these sales happen in Rancho Mirage? Not necessarily, but if that's your price bracket and you're not focused on a city, you're gonna have more competition for that particular house. And now let's look at the inventory. All right. Again, this is overall valley. And if we look back to um, total inventory before COVID started, we had almost 4,000 houses. And then prices went through the roof because inventory just kept getting absorbed. More people wanted to buy and there were fewer and fewer houses on the market. Here we are over here today at 2,462 homes, Coachella Valley wide. That is significantly under our historic high or most recent high, certainly not during uh, the Great Recession high, but sort of our average high going into the pandemic, pre-pandemic. So you can see the fewer invent less inventory and a stable buyer pool is going to produce stable prices. And if the buyer pool increases as we get to a point where the Fed re reduces interest rates, you're going to start to see competition for this inventory, which we don't have a lot of. All right, let's move down to inventory by city and in Rancho Mirage. More to choose from in Rancho Mirage. Awesome. Mm, across the board, Coachella, not so much. Everybody has a little bit more. Palm Springs, a lot more. I wouldn't say it's significantly higher in Rancho Mirage, but it is more. That's good for buyers, more to choose from. 
and then months uh, sa of sales ratio throughout the Coachella Valley. And what we're basically just saying is that we have about four months of inventory throughout the valley. And then we go down into a specific city. Rancho Mirage has about three and a half, a little more than three and a half. A year ago, we had two and a half months of inventories. And that just means if no new inventory came on the market, we would it would take us 3.6 months to sell everything. A year ago, it would have taken us 2.5 months. And then months of sales by price bracket is a little bit less. So a year ago in this condo price bracket, the average condo price bracket in Rancho Mirage, two and a half or 2.2, this now it's 3.1. Uh, so that's what, three weeks. And then a year ago at the, the higher price point, we had three months, now we have 3.7. So a little more than three and a half. Um, and then let's look at the uh, days on market. So essentially, um, we have seen our days on market increase. And the days on market is the date from when it's launched, a property is launched, to when it actually goes into contract, not when it closes. And then if it falls out of contract, it catches up on those days. Uh, 46 versus 38. So things are just staying on the market longer. It's also bloody hot outside <laughs> right now. So you don't, only the people who are actually that need to buy a house or really want to buy a house are out looking at houses on a Sunday today, <laughs> Sunday these days. Um, and then median, uh, it, median is also reflecting. Now this is median as broken down by price bracket. I've selected the two that are important for us in Rancho Mirage. And you can just see that things are on the market longer. Uh, at this higher price point, not significantly longer, I would say that is really still a very strong segment of the market. And then this is the average selling discount. And I want to be very careful. It doesn't mean that every single house is selling for a little bit less. This is to demonstrate that we don't have a wholesale disparity between what sellers are asking and what buyers are willing to pay. Uh, it just says that it's actually very stable. A year ago, the average was 2.6 in Rancho Mirage. Today, it's 3.2. And averages, remember, there might be one house that takes a 20% discount, unlikely. But let's say it takes a 20, and that's going to average it out for the house that had someone paying 20% over the asking price. And then if you ask me, uh, if you go by price bracket, you can see it's 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 minuscule. It's actually gone down at the higher level and at this level. So a year ago was, oh no, excuse me, that's kind of deceiving the way they put these two bars, but it's the same at the lower price point. And this is basically the same point one. that's nothing. All right, percent of homes selling over list price. So again, this is not to say that some people are paying 15% over. It's simply saying that some properties do sell over. It could be a dollar over. It could be 10% over. But the number of homes selling over asking is at 14.8%. During COVID, it was at 60%. 60% of the homes that launched sold for more than their asking price. Today, it's down. But it's still down. It's reflective of the fact that some properties are just more desirable. And so there's more competition for it. And the buyer is willing to offer more. Now, I always want to caution folks, price is not the only term you're buying on. So I can tell you in my experience, buyers are getting more, uh, more in the deal on other terms, not just price. And I think that's super important to keep that in mind. If you're a buyer in today's market, you might get a longer escrow. You might get the, your preferred service providers. You might get a better price. You might get um, an opportunity to move in before the close of escrow, depending on what your timeline is. And sellers on the flip side, they don't have as much leverage unless they're priced at such a point. We know there are buyers out there priced at such a point is that you now have some competition and you can say, I want a seller in possession, or I'm willing to take your price. That's the same as the other person's price, but I want to close in 10 days or no, you buyer who are asking for all my furniture. I have someone else who doesn't want my furniture and I'm going to sell it on the open market and thereby get a little bit more money. 
So that's what I have for you today. I'm happy to have conversations one-on-one. -on -one. Do not hesitate to reach out. You can text me, you can email me. And of course, if you leave a comment here, I do see that. Try and respond with about 24 hours. That's all I've got. Thanks so much. Have a great week. Bye-bye.